yeah. you're going to become number one in Thailand. Yeah. I, I, that's the goal. Yeah, that's the goal. I mean, I already cried, but now I'm... <laughs> I'm okay <Would> again. <laughs>
try to play punish, play a lot of hands as a big stack. And the only way you can do it is by being also somewhat loose in your value range. Or at least I think so. You definitely need queens, uh, kings in your non all in free bet always, because only that you can throw in a bunch of bluffs as well in order to stay sp somewhat balanced. And I would go a bit more extreme. I would think as a big stack you go checks as well in your small free bet range. And I would not be surprised if I see also is queen suited. He can describe strategies in a very digestible way for others. If something is very complicated, I have a feeling that Matthias can explain this in a couple sentences and you get it straight away. The way he explains those guides you later as well. So like if you struggle understanding something in the future, because of Matthias, you can get some ideas how to think about those situations, how you can study on your own uh, later. That that helps a lot. The sun. That's a deep run, right? <laughs> What's happening here? Yeah. I mean, randos happen and suddenly I'm running deep in tournaments. <laughs> Although we are 10 of 10, hope is alive because we have 22 bigs, let's go. Bain is uh, 11k INR, so about 8, uh, no, 130 uh, USD equivalent. And up top is uh, 8,000 USD equivalent. Let's go. Quite a decent one. All right, let's go. And this is fine. Oh. We chopped. We chopped. I mean, come on. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Never mind. <clears throat> We're gonna get more. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's a failed compilation. GG. GG. 10. Good enough. Tomorrow it's gonna be much bigger. We're gonna add a zero here and remove a zero here. That's right. <laughs>
Yeah, yeah. 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 I'll let you know. So. I really like to. I think that would be very possible. I'll let you know when it's better. I know, I know, man. That's the thing. It's just so many opportunities there, but I just need to give it. I just, yeah, going to become number one in Taiwan. Yeah, I have the goal. Yeah, that's the goal. And I will go further. Yeah, I'm not just that the number one in Taiwan is not that good. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't put it don't put it in the, oh my goodness no no you can't you can't I have to cut it out <laughs> oh you have to cut that off yeah. um, yeah. edit the number one in Taiwan is great but we're gonna <laughs> it's great even better yeah we're gonna try I think what's also really good is the Phil Ivy thing that he does all the time is like just taking the chips in his hand. Like, mm -hmm. for some reason, that makes people so uncomfortable. Like he just, whenever, you know, he's facing a bat, he has a clear black pitcher, he's just like sizing up the bat, the call, and then just like... <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then he plays with the chip so that you're aware that like it's literally almost happening. It's <laughs> like, he does that really, really well. Phil I is crazy. And now I've seen it the first time that when I play against him, he never obviously looks at you. I th always thought, you know, he's the guy staring at you. He never does it. He always looks somewhere else, but then he knows exactly, he wants to look at you when you're not knowing that he looks. And I mean, super impressive. I, I remember he was uh, playing against Vanessa Selps like eight years ago or something. Mm -hmm. and I think he probably has played against Vanessa Selps like seven, eight times in the high six game. I think it was a uh, high roller or something. And again, he was like, yeah, who, who, who's that? And, and who are you? And just, <laughs> it, like it got so in there. Like she's really, she was like, obviously she knew him and like they said hello like six times or something. And every time it was like, well, what's, okay. what's your name again? Like, <laughs> and he obviously he knew. Yeah. Like, but he, did, he does it with a lot of players, like this thing that he and does. he's not like, smiling or anything, he's just... No, no, it's just like... Okay, uh, just to okay, and, and who's that? Yeah, yeah, that's the guy who won the main, like... So, so and he knows, like... Yeah. He, Everybody has so much to share and at the same time, for all of us new players, uh, it's uh, it's very overwhelming uh, to see uh, them pouring out with their exp uh, experiences, their preparations and what they see in the poker field of pros, of uh, new people getting into poker and in general population uh, playing poker. So that was, that was very enriching to have conversations with them over meals and over uh, discussions of hands and just in general having fun. But you know, if you had to say to do it properly, to do it for many, many years, if this is the career you've chosen, what would you tell them? I have a very specific idea in mind. I would say you should have between 100 and 150 grind days online a year. I think you should take at least uh, two weeks a year, zero poker, more better three or four. This is actually one of the most important things, the few weeks, no poker. When you play ABI 50 to 100, I would say you should play about, let's say eight live trips. So like 50 to 90 live play days. The rest study like maybe um, at least 500 hours a year and maximum 1000 hours a year, I would say. Why not more? Yeah. I think when, I mean you, study for when you study more than 1000 a year, it's like what, like two and a half on average a day. It also is, it comes down to how efficiently you are studying. Like, for example, whenever I'm looking at spots my, by myself, it's just not that efficient or compared to like if you try to have a good or try to do it with somebody else, for example, whereas we're doing here. So I think it, someone might just get more out of these two hours that you just mentioned than, for example, someone else with doing like six to eight hours. I mean, I'm not including like, we just, you know, we look at a hand and talk about it. I'm really talking about like very specific study work. And I would say you should probably take a reasonable amount of time off so that averages to like a few hours a day for like actual study days. I think that is, I mean, if you, if you find out that you want to do more, you can do more, but like that's what I would say is a, is a healthy range. But I think it's also, besides what you're saying as a guideline, it's also pretty individual, you mean? Oh yeah. 
you can feel it if your body tells you know you went too much you need some rest you need some break and if you feel very healthy even after you grinded a lot and studied a lot why not continue if you feel good the idea is really more i think most players play too much especially online where it's not helping them so much that's what i mean if you play like if you have a hundred or a bit more play days a year it's like two and a half times a week like I think a lot of players overdo it and grind like four or five times, you can of course, but I think especially this integration, like you look at your final table, you review the hands, you like there's also not so much dollar heavy in it, I think it adds to it. Whereas like when there's low low season, like you make you don't really make much EV with the grind, so that's where this comes from. It's really this is less obviously if you want to play more, you can play more. Uh, this is really more like I think the EV of a Sunday or a Tuesday is like way higher compared to like Monday at a certain average buy-in, so just something to keep in mind. I think if you want to optimize for that, like obviously you can, if you if you feel like you feel amazing after five days a week for like every week, then I don't, I personally don't, I never had. Sigi, <laughs> you took all my chips. Sigi, why you do that? Samu. <laughs> I think if now out of any rounds, I'm now the most suspicious. <laughs> <laughs>